Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a home page for your groups within Teams. This can be used to highlight all the great content that can be found within the group itself or anywhere else in Office 365 for that matter. You can include links to YouTube, Microsoft Stream, any SharePoint libraries your school uses and pretty much anywhere else for that matter. It's a great way to highlight important content to your students or team which might otherwise get lost amongst all the many posts and files and comments that start collecting when you've been using one of these teams for a while. I'll be showing you how to add particular documents and resources and even how to include dynamic content so it automatically pulls in the latest video recordings or documents you've shared without you having to do a thing. So if you're using Teams with your classes or colleagues and want to create a homepage to highlight your most important links and resources, then keep watching. If you find this video helpful, please do give it a like by tapping on the thumbs up below. This really helps me out. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, why not click on it now and hit the bell? That way you'll get to hear about future videos I upload on Teams, remote learning and other edtech goodness. Okay, let's get into it. First up, let's start this video off by taking a look at a home page I made for our staff team within Teams. So you can see I've added it as a tab into the staff group, so there is a link to it sitting up here that I can click to access this page. Right at the top of the page it's got a nice banner you can add. I've called this page the virtual staff room, as I had in mind those good old carefree days where we actually sat down for a few minutes each day and shared useful stuff with each other, and I wanted this page to be the digital equivalent of that. The first content I have here is the video recordings of our Monday staff briefings given out by a head teacher each week. This is dynamic content, which means I've told it what type of content to find and it finds anything that matches. That way, come next Monday, the next video will get automatically slotted into here without me having to do anything. Running down the right side, I have the college's teaching and learning team's Twitter feed. Again, you can just point this at a particular Twitter handle or keyword and the page will then keep itself updated with all the latest tweets. Next I have recently shared documents, another dynamic content section, which will automatically show thumbnails of the latest documents being shared by our staff team. Clicking on these tiles will take you directly to those documents. So this one leads to a whole school report showing students' attendance and engagement in our daily live lessons we are putting out as a school. I actually did a video on how I made this report, so follow this link up here if you want to find out more about that. Tapping back up here will take me back to the virtual staff room. You can see these nice big thumbnails give a good idea about what the content is going to be about, so it's a nice and easy way for your team members to find what they're looking for. Below that we've got another dynamic section, this time pulling out the latest videos from Microsoft Stream that have the word assembly in the title, so tutors can quickly find these and share with their students. These links will play directly in the page and you can full screen these if you want to. Below that I've got some of my training videos that I want all our staff to be aware of to help them with their remote learning. These links to videos I've got on YouTube and again, you can see that they'll play right in the page. Next, we have some frequently used documents that staff will often be looking for. I've got our weekly behavior report, which is a big report that is produced once a week. These reports are run in Excel and saved into the same folder on our staff communal SharePoint site that we use as a network drive in our school. So again, I've told this page to go and fetch the latest report and show it here. When the next report comes out, this page will show that one instead. Similarly, over here, I've got the latest data drops for various year groups, which again are saved on our staff shared site, and this page is pulling up the latest sets of data available. Again, this is dynamic content. I'm not saying go and find this particular document or that particular document but I'm just asking it to find any document that matches certain criteria. As well as linking to various documents, you can also embed them if you wish. Here I've embedded an Excel spreadsheet that we use to host our school calendar. It's interactive so I can move it around to find what I'm looking for without having to go to the trouble of actually opening the file. 
If I do want to open it, I can just click down here and that's going to pull it up in the Excel web app. At the bottom, I've got the staff handbook, today's weather in Leicester and also in Barbuda, just to rub it in a little. And then over here, we've got a countdown in days, hours and minutes and seconds to the half term holidays. Only four days to go. Hooray! Now, I hope you can see that this is a pretty useful page. It surfaces a lot of content that is within the team itself or in other areas of Office 365 that the staff will be using. Now, this page is actually created in SharePoint which you may or may not be aware sits underneath Microsoft Teams and provides a lot of the storage and resources that Teams uses. Once you know this, you can start leveraging SharePoint to add extra functionality to Teams that Microsoft haven't got around to doing yet. I'm sure they will one day come up with a way for users to directly make something like this from within Teams, but in the meantime, I'll show you how you can pull back the curtain and see what's behind Teams making it work and I'll show you how you can use SharePoint to build one of these cool home pages that you can then directly embed in your team. Okay, so in Teams, pick a group you want to do this with and go to the file section of that team. Now, up here on the title bar, you'll see open in SharePoint. And if we tap here, it's going to reveal where your files really live. They don't live in Teams at all. They're in this SharePoint site that Teams secretly created for you when the group was created. So you can see I've ended up in a web page. The title bar tells me I'm in SharePoint and I can see I'm in the SharePoint site which has the same name and logo as the team that I came from. In the center of the page, I can see the same files and folders that were in the file section of Teams. So this is their true home. The view you get in Teams is just that, a view or a window through which you can glimpse your actual files here in SharePoint. Now on the left hand side you have entirely new navigation which if you care to explore will take you to the different places where your files and assignments and class notebook and video recordings and students work are all squirreled away. For instance if I tap on site contents and then class files and then assignments you'll find all your tasks you have set for the group. As fascinating as all this is, it's not why I came here. Let's click on Pages and take a look there. Now you should find that there is already a page called Home in this folder, and if you open it up, you'll find that your site already has a fairly decent home page that was auto-generated when the site was made. However, this is not used at all by Teams, so you probably didn't even know it was here. Now, you could just use this one as your home page and add bits to this to customize it and make it your own. But for some reason, these auto-generated home pages don't include a nice title bar that other web pages have. So personally, I like to start with a new page and build it from scratch myself. So let's go back to pages and click new site pages. And we will get a nice blank page with the title bar that we can use to build our home page. Firstly, the title bar, tap here to select an image to display. You'll find a large selection of stock images or you can upload one of your own or search Bing for one. Once you've found one you like, adjust the focal center and you can add text banner on top of it if you want to. Okay, now we have a nice title bar, we can add some structure to the page where we can add our content. This little plus side here on the side has a choice of different structure types. So you can have a one or two or three columns or one large column, one small one. Uh, you can have different sections with different structures within the same page. So coming back to my staff room page, you can see I've got one wide and one narrow uh, bar at the top of the page and then three columns for my videos and then two columns and then one column for the calendar. Notice that they have different background colors too. This is also something you can pick when you create each section. Let's try adding the one wide, one narrow column to start with. So this is my wide column on the left and the narrow column is on the right. I'm going to make this section light blue. Notice I have these little plus symbols at the top of each column and which I can use to select the various web parts to drop into the page. Now scrolling down these, you can see there are lots of different web parts that I can use. 
The text web part is fairly self-explanatory. You can add plain text or headings to your page and format it how you want. While I'm typing this in, I'll just mention that these web pages made via SharePoint are fully responsive. This means that pages will optimally resize themselves on different size screens, so they'll look great at different resolutions and on an iPad or even on a phone. So you don't need to worry about that sort of thing, it's all handled for you. Next up, I'm going to use the link web part to add a link to some websites we often use. These are really great. I can just place the web part in the page, tap in the URL to the website, and SharePoint will do the rest. Turn it into a nice link along with some descriptive text and a photo scrape directly from that site. Boom, job done. If you want to place dynamic content in your web page, then the highlighted content web part is an amazingly powerful go fetch tool, which you can just set and forget. Tell it what you want, and every time someone loads the page, it will populate it with the most recent content that matches your search criteria. I'm gonna use it here to pull up all my live lessons that have been saved to SharePoint. All my live lessons start with the word live, so tapping that in as the criteria is going to bring them all up. If you don't have your video recordings being saved to SharePoint yet, then I do highly recommend doing so. I made a video about setting this up for your school here, so follow the link if you're interested in that. You get a choice of different layouts for this web part. You've got grid, list, carousel and film strip. I think film strip looks about the best here. And at the bottom you've got some controls which uh, you can limit the number of things that will go and fetch. So I've got mine set to eight. And you can tick this box if you want the, the web part to disappear if it doesn't actually find anything at all. Okay, that's looking good. I'm still in editing mode though. So to see it properly, I can publish the page at any time to commit those changes I've been making. Looking good. If your meeting recordings are still going to stream, then no problem. You can also fetch videos from stream using the stream web part. My school has some nice mass videos on stream, so I'll link to our mass channel by simply pasting the link to the channel in here. Adding videos from YouTube is also really easy. Just add a YouTube web part onto the page and paste in the link to the video that you want to display. So I can easily drop in one of my mass videos from my YouTube channel, just by pasting the link in here. Don't forget to republish once you're done so that your changes will be viewable to others. Now there are a whole bunch of other useful web parts you can play around with to add more features to your pages, so feel free to try some more out. I've done another video that looks at other web parts you might like to try, I'll link to it above. Once you have your page looking how you want it to be, it's time to add it into our groups in Teams. To do that, go back to your group in Teams and tap on this plus symbol up here at the end of the tabs at the top. Now there are lots of things you can add into your groups and I'll maybe do a video on some more of these at another time. But today I'm just going to be using the SharePoint add-in. Tapping that gives me a pop-up where I can choose what page from SharePoint I want to add. It shows me a list of all the pages from the link SharePoint site, including the auto-generated home one, 
plus my new one I just made. So let's pick that one, press save, and that's it. Your page is now embedded in SharePoint and looking rather splendid. Okay, so we've looked at making a home page in Microsoft Teams to highlight important content you want your class or colleagues to see. It's really easy once you know a little bit about how SharePoint works. If you found this one useful, please do give it a like by pressing the thumbs up below. If you want to find out more about using SharePoint, why not check out this video I made with more tips on creating dynamic topic pages over here, or click on one of these other thumbnails for more great EdTech videos. See you on the next one.